Okay, today guys, I'm going to show you my own personal method for making aluminum signs. Um, if anything can stand the test of time, it's aluminum. By the time this thing rots, I'll be dead and gone for hundreds of years. So I, I, I really like the idea of doing something that's going to be around at least long enough for some meth head to steal it off the side of my garage and recycle it for drug money. But uh, anyways... You start out with a printed a printout from the, the internet or, or whatever program you may have, okay, with, with the letters and the exact size and font that, or style of font that, that you, you want on your sign. So you can see how I've got that here. Um, then I want to show you this in a minute, but you, we're going to skip cutting these out painstakingly with scissors. That's the first step. The second step is to glue it to a piece of polystyrene or styrofoam. And then the next step after that is to cut the letters out. And that's where we're going to start uh, this video. So uh, let's get on with it. Time. So here are the letters that make up the name of my channel, Blue MacGyver. And you can see these ones have already been cut out. And they come from uh, just, you know, regular pieces of polystyrene. And the basic idea is that you print out a sheet of paper that has your letters on it. Okay? You, you cut them out in, in great detail. And it takes a long time. But, um, anyways, you glue each individual letter down onto the foam. And then you use them as a pattern to cut out on this hot foam or hot wire foam cutter, okay? You can pick one of these up at like Hobby Lobby. But anyways, um, so I basically rough them out to the right like this big and then, uh, then I kinda, I can kinda start working them. So I'll give you an example of what this should look like when you do it. It doesn't take very long for that wire to heat up. You want to move quickly and at the same speed no matter where you go even if you're making mistakes because if you let that wire sit there for very long it will eat up your foam really bad okay You can always go back and take more off, but you, it's harder to, to get it to look nice after you've eaten too much off of there. And so there you go. There's the letter A. I need to work on it a little bit more. Get it just right. Okay. And now. When you want to go into the center of one of these, just put a cut in the paper, and that'll give you a way in. Okay, so pull the paper around. There you go. Boy, it's not being real cooperative. There we go. And now we have our letter A. So you do that for all the letters and then we'll move on to the next step. Alright guys, so we got it basically down to um, right before we glue it to the backing. Okay? And here's what I've done. I've put a piece of paper, glued a half inch piece of paper all the way around the perimeter. That's just to pretty it up. You don't really have to do that, but it makes it look a lot smoother. It's around the inside of each hole. I painstakingly put it on every letter. And then I turn this thing on and I cut the extra off. So it'll look like, uh, like this. Okay, you cut the extra off. That paper. The paper helps uh, guide, guide it to see its final thickness. Because I've chosen a half inch as the final 
height of the raised letters. So I kind of dive into the center of the letter and pull to the end. And it comes off real nice. And so then now you have all these nice neat little letters. And we're going to end up gluing these to the, we call it the, the backing or the background. Okay, so there are the letters blue for blue in um, the NeuroPole style. They're half inch raised and they're all coated in paper except for the uh, back side where we'll be gluing them to the, the backing or the background, whatever you want to call it. So we have our letters and they're kind of lined up so I can see how much of a how big of a piece I need to make the background with and it kind of gives me an idea um, how big this thing's going to end up really so um, I'll just have to glue down all the pieces once I cut the, the backing to the size I want and um, then we can actually move on to pouring the aluminum Okay, so it's the end of a lazy summer day in 2015, and we have the foam part done. I'd say this part here is about three or a, a quarter of an inch, and the raised letters are a half inch. And so the next part would be to take this and bury it in the sand, and I would put it face down and then put a riser here and a riser here. Well, you know, the aluminum will pour down into the sand this way, fill up, and come out this way. So that when we unbury it, this wall will be in aluminum.
so the aluminum's inside there melting inside of a crucible. And when it's melted to the right temperature, we'll pull it out with the tongs. Okay. And we'll set it on that concrete pedestal over there with that, that device around it. And we'll pour it into the mold which is sitting over there. Right behind you, you'll see I have a shield up against the wind. And that's because it's just too darn windy today. All right, now it's uh, it's still freshly poured and it's smoking. It's still liquid. Whew, that was a tough one. All the adrenaline's making my hand shake. Okay, here in a couple minutes we'll pop this baby out and see what we have. Alright, so there we go. It's turned out pretty nice. I gotta admit, that hard work's paid off. Alright, so this baby did turn out really sharp. You can see all the lettering's intact. I'm just knocking the burnt paper off now. Yeah, cleaning this up is going to take a little while, but you can see how it's going to turn out.